Alright, so in this video I'm going to show you how to um, add one of, uh, one of the components of the Cordova API to your project and show you a little um, on how to interface with that. So the first thing we want to do, um, as you can see I Google searched Cordova API and the first link, Apache Cordova API documentation. And you'll see on the left over here, got a whole list of information that we could go through. Um, down at the bottom here, if I can get to it so I can show you. There we go. Plugin APIs. And the Cordova default plugin APIs, you have battery status, camera, console, contacts, device, device motion, device orientation, dialogues, file system, file transfer, geolocation, globalization, in-app browser, uh, media, media capture, network information, splash screen, um, vibration, and status bar. And today I'm just going to go with the really basic one, uh, the device API. Alright, so once we've selected the device API, um, we can see right here their repository is listed. So if we copy this repository, Which actually come over here and make sure they're the same. Well, what you might have to do is actually Google the Cordova de plugin uh, device GitHub. Um, and then once you do that, you can just copy the link from their GitHub. And once you do that, you navigate, you can open a terminal window, navigate to your project. So I'm going to go back to the root directory, or our home directory, and then I'm going to go ahead and navigate from there to my project directory. So desktop, hello world. All right, once we're in the hello world folder, we can type Cordova. So this is within our Cordova project. Type Cordova uh, plugins, which will list out, if we just hit enter, it'll tell us a list of all plugins. Um, if you say Cordova plugins add and then we paste the link to our GitHub, it will go out and fetch um, that Cordova plugin and it will add it to our project. All right, so once that's been done, you notice it said it added it for Android and iOS. Now that that's been done, if we type plugins again, we'll see it listed in here org.apache.cordova.device. It has a version number and then the name of the API. <clears throat> All right, so once that's been done, if we switch back over here, we go back to our device API documentation. I don't know why I left that page, but I did. Um, what we can do is a little code snippet right here on event or add event listener on device ready, um, and then say on device ready, we're going to essentially just console log device .cordova. Uh, we might take that up just a notch. I'm going to go ahead and switch to WebStorm. And right here, we can see um, we have our script that calls Cordova.js. Um, and then we have another JavaScript file um, that just comes default with Cordova. So, first step we want to do is um, create a new line here, script. Alright, inside of this script file, say document add event listener. And save a little bit of time, switch over to here. I am going to use, actually, I just use this exact same thing we got going on right here. <laughs> switch back. And yeah, we're just going to paste this guy right here, save a little bit of time. So, we added our event listener. Uh, it's listening for an event called device ready, which is a Cordova event. And then it says on device ready, uh, do something. Um, so, it's going to console log device.cordova, which is fine and dandy, but it doesn't really uh, do any good for us. 
So I'm going to take that up a notch and we're just going to change this guy just so we can see it. Um, alert device dot Cordova dot and the Cordova platform has you've got device dot Cordova model platform UUID and version. Um, we're just going to console log the the platform. So Cordova, if I could type platform. All right. Now that that's been done, we're actually going to run this in our iOS simulator because it seems to run a little bit better, even though it's huge on this screen. I'm going to switch back to terminal. I've made my change. Cordova build iOS. It's going to build um, our Xcode project. eventually. Alright, now that that's done, we'll switch to Xcode. And we've got the 4S selected again. We're going to choose to run it. You can also run it with uh, Command-R on the Mac. But uh, while the simulator starts up, I'm going to go ahead and pause this. I'll be right back. Alright. This thing should almost be done loading up. I wanted to go ahead and apologize for the uh, all the pausing. This laptop isn't exactly the fastest. Alright, so, I guess the platform came up as undefined. Let's go see why. Device.cordova.platform. How about we say dot .model, Let's see what happens. Should load Cordova. I'm going to move this. Alert into put this guy out. Into right here. Paste. Alright. So they already had a, um, an on device ready event that was firing. I just didn't pay any attention to it. And um, instead of creating our own, I just went in and added our alert to that. Go ahead and build our project one more time. Oh wow. And I see another error. It's just device.model or device.platform. I'm not sure why I was putting device.cordova. It's a uh, slip up on my part. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that and build one more time. <laughs> and subsequent builds become a little bit faster after the, the initial build. Switch back to Xcode, hit Command R. 
it's going to execute it again. And if we switch over to our iOS simulator, it already started to run the project again. All right. So the first thing you can see is our um, should be our model. So device dot model. Uh, if I click OK on that alert, we should get the device dot platform on the next one. There you go, iOS. All right. Um, as far as working with the other APIs. Uh, the only other little tidbit I have to say about that is that the Cordova um, APIs typically use a lot of nested functions and what I mean by nested functions is they they just use callbacks um, rather than returning values um, they use callbacks and pass the values back into the functions um, so what I mean by that is if they had uh, something called I don't know. They have a file system API, so file system dot get file. Um, when they when you call this function, it's you can't say var you know uh, my file equals file system dot get file because they don't return the files from the functions. Instead, what you would have to do is say file system dot get file and pass in a callback function. And inside of this callback function, you would have access to your my file. Um, and then from within this callback function, you would be able to interact with my file. So my file dot um, do something. Um, now, this is all uh, hypothetical right here. But as far as their API is concerned, they use a lot of callback functions. So you may find it. Um, a little strange at first being that you have a lot of nested callbacks. Uh, one way you could work around this is by using uh, promises um, and essentially tell so if you if you did want to work uh, by saying variable um, you know my file rather than saying variable my file equals file system dot get file um, you could define your my file variable so var my file um, ahead of it and then you could say um, once we get this guy back my file equals we'll just call this inner file so it doesn't get confusing my file equals inner file um, and then you would return your promise um, and after my file got set equal to inner file, you would resolve that promise. So if you're using Angular JS, for instance, you would use something like dollar Q. Um, the promise library might be something for a different, uh, different video, but I just wanted to let you know that um, that was one of the strangest things that I noticed about the Cordova API, um, which I guess is by design, but it threw me off at first. <laughs> um, Alright, that's it for this video.